The safety cycle typically begins with identifying hazards, which are potential sources of injury or damage. In other words, a hazard is a potential cause of a mishap or loss event involving personal injury, death, environmental damage, or some other form of unacceptable loss. A hazard log is used to record hazards identified for a particular system. The hazard log starts with a list of hazards from any similar legacy system to capture lessons learned from previous projects. Additional hazards are added, first by analysis, and later by recording field experience after the product is deployed. Analysis is often performed by a method called HAZOP. A HAZOP works by applying modifiers to system requirements. For example, if there is a requirement for speed, a HAZOP would modify the wording of that requirement with keywords such as too fast or too slow to help in brainstorming what might happen if the system was faster than the required speed or slower than the required speed. Once hazards have been identified, each is assigned a risk. Intuitively, a risk can be thought of as the product of the probability of a mishap times the consequence of that mishap, often equated to dollars. Those per mishap risks are added up to get the total expected cost of system failures. In practice, this mathematical approach has problems because it is difficult to create precise numbers for both the probability and the consequence. It also has trouble with very low probability events that have extremely high negative consequences. Thus, it is common to see a risk table approach as shown by this figure. With the risk table, consequences are placed into perhaps a handful of bins, with each bin covering more or less an order of magnitude in severity. Any consequence on the border of a bin is rounded up to the next most severe bin. Thus, consequences form the rows of the table. The columns of the table have to do with probability. Again, probability is put into a few bins, usually with an order of magnitude or two difference between adjacent bins. The risk for each mishap is rated by looking at the intersection of its row and column in this table. In this example, the upper left square of very high consequence and very high probability might refer to a mishap that could result in multiple fatalities and would, if not mitigated, happen on a daily basis for deployed fleet of systems. Such an obviously problematic situation would be rated as a very high risk according to this table. Each safety standard, and potentially each safety project, might have slightly different arrangements of risk values for the squares of the table, but in general, the upper left of the table has the very high risks, which correspond to very high sill requirements, while the lower right has low risks that correspond to low sills. In this example table, a very high risk probably corresponds to sill 4 in IEC 61508. Once a risk has been identified, that sill stays the same even though the risk has been mitigated to an acceptably low probability.